Yeah, so I picked uh, the Galapa. Um, and if y'all remember from last time, uh, my character is like quite large, like head and shoulders above everybody else and quite broad, um, just massive. And I guess you would have noticed in, the, in our time together, he's very slow moving, obviously, very deliberate, um, doesn't really do a whole lot, just kind of hangs out, maybe reads the books off the, off the bookcase. Um, but in instances where like things, conflict happens, he's right there in the forefront, um, trying to, you know, hold things down or beat things down as the occasion arises. Is there um, anything that he has spe specific about his look or anything like uh, that? Yeah, um, uh, he, uh, we would we would call it in human in world uh, in real life terms a alligator snapping turtle uh, type of look with the shell being a bit more uh, conical as opposed to smooth, um, and he has a uh, little you know of course little spikes coming off of his his fore limbs and hind limbs, um, but one thing that's particularly noticeable about him is there are uh, bits of metal that have been pressed onto the where the bone would stick most prominently out of the skull and the neck um, as well as on the forearms um, and the there's also metal uh, implants along the shell uh, that match the metal of the plate armor that he wears hmm. um not gonna do a voice don't have the talent or the time but uh so, I would argue you have the talent. Come it's on. Not, it's not in here. Uh, so the he is a tall, broad-shouldered, red Dracona, but it's not the normal red Dracona. He's like deep red, like burgundy, like blood-colored. And uh, do I have this like memory thing too of where I'm at? Yeah. Yeah, okay. feel free um, to give any more about your appearance, your clothing, or anything like that. Sure. So. Uh, his eyes are really, really bright orange. Like, they're almost on fire. Uh, like, there's a fire inside, almost. And, um, yeah, he's the color of blood. He's very tall. He's got two sets of very kind of pronounced dragon horns that kind of angle backwards. Uh, give us some more of a description about your simian uh, looks. Uh, appearance. Let's see. So, uh, any clothes I have and like my light leather armor and stuff is all kind of dark and, and inconspicuous shades of, um, deep brown and black. And that's clearly because I like to disappear into the shadows, which a lot of times people wonder if I'm in the room or, or where I went. And then all of a sudden I'll emerge from a shadow somewhere and it's a little bit unsettling until you get used to it. <laughs> um, Pretty wiry and, and toned uh, fur, mostly covered by armor, but the, the fur on my hands and around my face and things like that. Uh, kind of the color of ashes, dark burnt ashes with flecks of dark brown in there. Sort of matches my armor now, whether I chose the armor color scheme because it matched my fur or or not. Who knows? Um, <clears throat> human, obviously. Uh... <laughs> Like tanned skin, regardless of how much you see me wash myself, if you ever do, uh, I just look like I'm dirty always. Uh, yeah, tall, lanky, like six five, six six, but like ripped, you know. Um, but still very, very thin. But it's all muscle underneath there. Uh, wear clothes of like kind of patchwork, um, homemade camouflage looking, uh, at least camouflage for where I think I'm from or where I came from. Um, let's see. Also wild born because <laughs> why not just make us all wild borns? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I 
let's see. I go by the name of Whoopi. The physical description of this Dracona, his name is Malachite. He has old wrinkled skin and scales with a deep shade of green. It looks black on most days, but in the sun you can see a tinge of deep green. Malachite's eyes glow like emerald gemstones. He is a very old Dracona. His graying hair is kept in rolled clumps of dreadlocks. It falls down to the back of his neck. He wears a minstrel's cloak, a fur-lined neck and hood. But the cloak is made up of many colored patches that form a very distinct dragon scale pattern. Around his neck, Malachite wears a silver chain necklace with a large rectangular cut gemstone set in a brass pendant. This was that symbol that we talked about earlier set in that uh, same pendant. That gemstone, excuse me. Across his chest is a series of overlapping leather strips that go up one side with straps and buckles securing it. The exposed side of his chest reveals a tattered cloak that once was finely cut coat, excuse me, that once was finely cut and now shows the years of wear and tear. The black coat has puffy sleeves that are striped with burgundy and red down the arms. His forearms are covered with steel bracers and a shiny blue metallic color that has a elbow plate that's a little bit pale green. Mm. And a similar pair of metallic plates cover Malachite's knees. The pants he wears are a black and burgundy red. They are cut off, cut off just below the knee, and Malachite wears no shoes and no boots. He has scaly feet with bone-white claws and toes and fingers. It just they they contrast his dark skin. He carries a wooden luke, ukulele. Wooden ukulele. Its deep black ebony wood color runs from head down through the neck and body. The only bit of color on the instrument are the brass frets and the tuners. What you don't see on Malachite are the many throwing knives and daggers hidden about his person. What appears to be missing are a tail and horns. Most Dracona have both. Malachite has neither. No scars, no nubs, just missing. He was born without them, and instead came into this world with a head full of hair in place of horns. Mm. 